Hi, Troy the Full Setup here, back with another video for you today. And today we are going to do an unboxing and overview of one of my new motherboards. This is an Asus Prime Z370A. Now this motherboard is um, for coffee late processors. It can be picked up for about 150 pounds. We're going to do a quick, you know, unboxing and just overview of all the features today. I won't be showing the BIOS, but if you do want to see the BIOS, I have got a video of an 8350K where I overclock it to five gigahertz, and I'll put a link of that in the description for you. And Anyway, let's get in to have a look at this motherboard. Let's start with having a look around the box then. So here's a picture of the motherboard. It's an Asus Prime Z370A and Aurora Sync. It has Aurora Sync. It's got RGB. But it's also got loads of other stuff. Computery stuff. If we can get some focus. And I can keep it balanced. So we've got a Z370 chipset. Intel Core inside. Well, not until you put one in. Octane. We've got Octane memory support, NVIDIA SLI, AMD Crossfire, DTS Connect, DTS headphone, 3D printing friendly, and it's got a HDMI. Must be some sort of new connector, but yeah, it's got a HDMI. Let's have a look at the side of the box. Prime Z370A, Aurora Sync. Prime Z370A, oh look, it's got Aurora Sync. Prime Z370A, Aurora Sync. I don't even know if we've seen this side already. Prime Z370A, and it has Aurora Sync. What about the back of the box? Oh, we've got Aurora Sync. Oh, and we've also got Realtek Audio, um, M.2 Heatsink, Intel Optane Technology, the um, five-way optimization. As we know, the support from Asus, I absolutely love it. Second to none. Love the BIOS, love all the um, software that comes with it. And then we just have a picture of the back and all the general specs as well. So we have a look inside the box. So here is the motherboard. As you know, I've already been using it, so it's not a true unboxing, but I haven't actually taken one look at the accessories that are inside this box. So what accessories does it come with? I generally hardly ever touch the motherboard accessories, except obviously this one, the IO shield, um, which is cushioned. It's got like a cushiony feel to it. There are some M.2 screws. Sorry, it's gonna be quite hard to see this in the bag. Also have a high bandwidth NVIDIA SLI bridge. It's not really, it looks quite nice actually. Obviously it's not RGB, but it looks okay. Then we have a tool for putting in the CPU. Um, useful actually. I've always wondered how people bend pins on, C on motherboards, but I actually almost did it the other day. I dropped it in like a complete idiot. This is a, oh yeah, I remember seeing this on the website. So this little holder means that you can put, I think, a 40 mm um, fan over the VRM. Not something that I'm gonna use because I think it will ruin the look of the board. But, you know, for extreme overclockers, open air test benches, definitely good. Then we have three SATA cables, although that's not nice. They're not putting the black and white SATA cables in anymore. Ah, now these I love. So you can put all your power connectors, your hard drive LEDs, all of the stuff on that, and then you just plug that into the board, which is really good, especially in tight systems. And when you're you know, getting towards the end of your build, it's getting a bit stressful. This is really useful. And then the rest of the stuff is just various manuals. Installation guide, 25% off a cable mod. I was actually looking at doing a cable mod order recently, so I might have to have a look into that. And then there's a driver disc, but I recommend that you download all the drivers off the internet and give it the latest BIOS upgrade. Anyway, let's have a look at the motherboard. Let's start off with the back of the motherboard. Now there are no hidden M.2 slots whatsoever. As you can see, we've got an all black PCB. Let's have a look at the IO then. Well, we have a two USB 3.1 Gen 2s. One's a standard and one is a USB-C. Um, we've got DVI port. Display port, HDMI, another two USB 2.0s and two USB 3.0s as well. So I would have been loved to have seen an extra couple of USBs on this board. I've already had to use adapters when I've got loads of stuff plugged in. Then we have the Gigabyte Ethernet um, and then we have, we have an optical output. Um, now there's five channel audio, although you can do, I think it's eight or 7.1 channel with this, but you do have to use the front header audio as well if you want to hook up to 7.1 speaker devices. So let's start off by looking at the top part of the motherboard. 
starting off with the top half of the motherboard then well the first thing you're going to notice is this lovely io cover now one thing i couldn't tell when i ordered it with the um prime motherboards is they look quite silvery um, and i really was hoping that this was going to be an all white io shield because as you know i do really like white motherboards sadly it doesn't extend all the way down the board like the deluxe is i really do miss the deluxe boards but it's a very nice feature it's always nice to have an io cover as well um here you can see we've got the eight pin power um this is for the cpu power um and then we've also got a six plus four i think it's yeah six plus four so we've got a 10 phase power overclocking with the 8350k has been absolutely fine up to five gigahertz and i don't think i'm going to run into any problems with the 8600k either and then we've got nice heat sinks as well covering all of the vrm so it's yeah, generally quite a nice pack motherboard for the price. I've seen other motherboards that have a lot less phases in this power range. Then we also have the LGA 1151 CPU socket. Um, now, sadly, this isn't backwards compatible. As we all know, it's Coffee Lake only. We can only put Coffee Lake in here and it's got a nice little cover as well. So you just basically put the CPU on, drop that down and then this little puppy pops off. Then we have a chassis fan connector down here, but the one thing it also has, which I really like um, the positioning of it, is it has an AIO pump cooler, which means that you don't have to like figure out how to get your cable. You know, I've sometimes seen them over here, like pump connectors. Um, so it's really nice to have it there. Very easy to wire in. Talking about fan connectors as well, we also have a CPU fan connector here and then a CPU um, fan option connector as well. So they're two four pin PWM fan connectors. Perfect if you're using like AOI coolers with lots of fans on it, maybe it's like push pull. You've got all the connectors that you need there. Um, moving over to the dim slot sensor, there is four dim slots, which will take a maximum of 64 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 4,000 megahertz. I've only tested it with 3,200 megahertz, had no problems, set XMP, no issues whatsoever. That's one thing we get with Intel is rock solid memory support. Then we have another chassis fan connector as well, four pin PWM. There is a memory OK button. There's also, you can't really see it, but there's some debug LEDs here as well. So it's going to tell you if your RAM's not in properly, if your CPU's not in. Really nice little feature to have there. Love having the power switch to turn it on as well while you're building your system. And then we have the 24 pin connector. Is there anything else we have up here? Also as well, we have an M.2 slot as well coming across the board. Moving on to the bottom of the motherboard then. Well, firstly on the side here, we have a six SATA, six gigabytes per second ports. Um, looks like they've got rid of the SATA Express ports, which is, you know, good really, because it I don't think it ever took off. Um, and then there is also a USB 3.1 Gen 1 connector on the side. And I'm really happy that they've got one on the side. And the reason is, there is another one down here and I think anyone that subscribes to the channel you've regularly seen when the USB 3.3.0 or 3.1 ports are at the bottom I've often not put the cable in because I can't get the cable to bend out of the you know sort of where I've got the basement area into there without putting loads of stress on this connector so really happy to see one on the side there um, then we have the Z370 chipset now this part here is removable and underneath it there is an M.2 port so this should hopefully keep Keep your m.2 ssd a little bit cooler you know it's not so close to the graphics card getting all of that heat so yeah hopefully that does it well although actually if you went sli it would be underneath moving on to some other connectors here as well you'll see there's these sort of 3d print areas and that is for the m.2 fan again four pin pwm but you can put any fan in there it doesn't have to just be for here you know it's set up ready to go um and then what else do you have in here as well so you've got all the connectors for putting in all your power like we've seen the adapter earlier another two usb 2.0s um there's an extension fan uh socket here although it doesn't come with the adapter in the in the box i don't know whether they haven't included it or if you have to buy one separately i've got one that came with my x299 motherboard but that should help you get some extra fans in there as well pwm it's going to help you out if you're going for some serious water cooling um, and then we've just got the RGB header as well. So if you want to hook up, whether it's RGB strips or you want to hook up RGB fans. And talking of RGB, I forgot to mention there's RGB lighting on the back of the board up at the top as well. Moving on to the PCIe slots then. Well, we have four PCI 3.0 by one modes. At the bottom here, we have a PCI 3.0 by 16, but it only runs at a maximum of by four mode. Here we have 
two more PCI Express graphics card slots, but these ones, as you can see, they've got like a metal shielding on them. So if you've got like a heavy, you know, heavy graphics card, they're going to be reinforced. They, if you're running a single graphics card, it'll be running by 16 mode. But if you're running an SLI or Crossfire, it's going to be running at eight mode. Also, as well, the one thing to notice as well that I really like here is that they've got a nice spacing between them. So, uh, quite a lot of graphics cards these days are two and a half slots thickness. My Paylet cards are two and a half slot. So, if you're looking at doing an SLI or Crossfire and you've got a chunky graphics card, you're not going to have any problems fitting them into this system. And if you are using thinner graphics cards as well, um, just standard two slots, they're going to be getting a nicer bit of airflow. And just at the end here as well, we also have the crystal audio. So, there we go. There's everything sort of on this motherboard um, if you've got any questions about it just let me know as always with these videos I do them more as for like a topic and a discussion so you know if you're using this motherboard if you're finding that you're getting a win with it or you're getting a loss if there's a BIOS update you don't like can you just comment leave it in the description it's really good to get everyone together you know as a community um, and if you want to see the overclocking video there's a link in the description as well so yeah if you're using this motherboard leave some comments if you like it tell me why if you don't like it tell me why and I'll be back with some more videos real soon.